تحریک کشمیر برطانیہ کے زیر اہتمام ہفتہ یوم یکجہتی کشمیر کا آغاز اس سلسلے میں گزشتہ روز پہلی آن لائن کشمیر کانفرنس کا انعقاد ہوا جس کی صدارت تحریک کشمیر برطانیہ کے صدر راجا فہیم کیانی نے کی ٹریڈ یونین کے رہنما ایئن اسکاٹ سٹاپ دی وارڈ کے رہنما جان ریس سابق کونسلر سلما یعقوب کشمیری رہنما ڈاکٹر امتیاز احمد خواجہ سلیمان محمد غالب صدر تحریک کشمیر یورپ سوشلسٹ ورکر پارٹی کے رہنما الیسٹر وینگٹ ہیومن رائٹس لائر محمد علی اسکر اسٹیورٹ ریچرڈسن نئی ملک نائلہ خان نے اپنے خیالات کا اظہار کرتے ہوئے کہا کہ ہم کشمیریوں کی پر امن جد و جہد کے ساتھ کھڑے ہیں جب تک کشمیریوں کو حق کے خود ارادیت نہیں ملتا اس وقت تک بھارتی مظالم کے خلاف آواز اٹھاتے رہیں گے کانفرنس میں رہنماؤں نے برطانوی حکومت سے اپیل کی کہ وہ بھارت کو اسلحے کی سپلائی بند کرے کیونکہ بھارتی افواج کشمیر میں انسانی حقوق کی دھجیاں بکھیر رہی ہے absolutely decisive and absolutely uncontested ruling from the United Nations about what should happen here. Not everybody's that lucky with the United Nations. I mean, it doesn't enforce it, that's for sure. Uh, but the decision remains uh, on the books. It remains a lever to be deployed against all those governments that pay lip service to the United Nations. But in this case, not the only case, but but it's an important case in which they seem reluctant, uh, if not opposed, to delivering on a United Nations promise. And I think with every politician, and every politician in the mainstream in Britain does pay lip service to the United Nations, the question should be asked, why are you being hypocritical in this case? You say that you support the United Nations. There is an absolutely clear and uncontested United Nations decision here. Why are you not seeking to enforce it? And why are you not taking effective action against those countries that are determined not to see it put into action? So I would say that's where the point of leverage and the point of pressure uh, comes from. Uh, how to make that pressure effective? Well, it's a question of determination and a question of building the broadest possible uh, campaign of educating, enlightening, and mobilizing the widest uh, sections of the population. And we have uh, with us uh, Sister Salma Yaqub. Uh, you know, she's a political activist who, you know, worked so hard against the war in Iraq, but also she's locally involved in politics and she always, uh, our link is with Kashmir and she always supported the cause of Kashmir. So I would invite her to say. This is an long struggle, an old struggle. And of course, it's very frustrating when you've been raising these issues of injustice, not just for a few months, not just for a few years, but literally decades, and you don't see uh, change um, on the ground. Um, but it reminds me of um, a saying by Martin Luther King, who said, we must accept finite disappointment in this life, but we must never lose our hope the um, European Union. We've seen um, how this has been exposed by the EU Disinformation Lab, which exposed literally hundreds of fake news outlets. 750 global media outlets were identified who were spreading misinformation on behalf uh, of India. False NGOs have been set up. So it's constantly trying to make uh, the narrative a controversial one, when actually there's no controversy. The fact is human rights are being violated day in, day out. The fact that today we have women leaders, uh, people like Sophie Famida, um, Asya Andrabi, Nahida Nafis, who are being held in the notorious jail where Kashmiri leaders like Makbul Bhatt and Nafsa Gul were hung. You know, these are very psychologically traumatizing realities as well as the brutal physical torture that takes place. So here, what, what happens in both cases is might. It is about power. The more powerful can do whatever it, uh, he or she likes. Uh, that's what happens in India. This is why they, uh, again, someone used the words, they can get away with it. Yes, because they are powerful. 
we as, as uh, uh, people who are oppressed appeal to the world to try and help us, but unfortunately the alliances are between the powerful who've either been settler colonialists themselves or have become settler colonialists. So they stand together. They share technology, weaponry. We know that between uh, India and Israel, particularly under Netanyahu and Modi, uh, th there are big hugs. You know, they, 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 uh, uh, they, they walked into the Mediterranean Sea uh, together with, in bare feet because- Union in council. I thank you for your very kind welcome tonight. Now the Birmingham Trades Council has for many, many years stood by the, stood by the Kashmiri community supports demands that India not only ends its occupation, but, with, but does withdraw its troops from Kashmir. We support the peoples of Kashmir in their demand for the right to self, in their right for self-determination, a denial that goes back over 70 years. Kashmiris, like other peoples across the world, have the right to determine their own future. At this point, we must build our demand, maximize support across all communities that the United Nations and the international community and the trade union movement together must put pressure on India and the United Nations organization itself and our government to make sure India complies with international law and respect the peoples of Kashmir. Um, I think that the current situation is, is for anyone who's watching is absolutely horrific. Um, what uh, the Kashmiris are being put through, and um, I, you know, some of the um, it seems that the, some of the military techniques I think so, so echo what I what was said earlier. Some of the military techniques that are being used against the Palestinians, which is the actual deliberate maiming of and blinding of people and mutilating of protesters, um, is very much um, is what's being done to, to to particularly the youth protesting youth in Kashmir. I said that. The sort of cases of um, mass blinding that I saw with, with, with the use of these sort of like pellets that the Indian Army are firing. Um, it, it just seems to be a, a, a long litany of atrocities and horrors, really. Um, and of course, the sort of Modi's revocation of Article 370 um, in Kashmir and also the Citizens Amendment Act, which he's trying to introduce, which we introduced in India as well, is it, clearly, it, clearly aimed at Muslims. It's clearly a, a form of communalism, I suppose, I'm not quite sure if you should say it's racism if it's coming from Modi, but certainly, um, it's certainly the most brutal form of commun communalist, communalist division that, that Modi has been stoking inside India. And of course, um, Jammu Kashmir being a Muslim majority state, um, it's quite clear that they want some form of, as, as was said earlier, some form of ethnic cleansing, I suppose, really. And of course, the role that Britain has played in this has been absolutely horrendous as well. I mean, Britain's Britain's arms sales to India is about half, well over half a billion pounds worth of weaponry since since 2015. So I suppose um, our, our responsibility here is is, is um, you know through through our through our different movements, through the trade union movements, and through through the different solidarity movements, is to keep the pressure on our politicians and keep the pressure on our representatives here to actually um, to actually st stop the flow of arms to India because that would that would certainly be a, a, a pretty a pretty good start I think that the Commonwealth Games which is taking place in Birmingham well um, it's quite simple that the in, you know the Indian India should be disinvited to the Commonwealth Games on the basis of massive human rights violations um, and, and the Modi government what's happening in Kashmir but probably what's happening in India as well. So, um, you know, the world is silent. Everywhere is silent. We're up against economy, I think, over, over humanity. You know, it's a dispute that's been going on for 73 years. You know, but we are, we are running out of time if things don't happen soon. He's, Modi's moving through Kashmir so fast. Uh, but we know he's make it break in international laws. We know he's breaking the Geneva Convention. There has to be somebody somewhere that will do something. Um, so, I mean, pre here we can pressure our UK government. That's our job here. We can try and raise awareness amongst the UK public. This is where we can do our work and we can build. And if we can unite and share work and come together for that, then I think that will bring us the, the, bring us power um, and um, 
you know, in terms of, yeah, just unity and unity is strength and working together for that and keep looking for the solutions because Kashmiris are, they were promised their right for self-determination. They were partitioned through no, you know, fault of their own. And, and in some ways, the solution is actually very, very simple. You know, Scotland were allowed their right for self-determination. Why can't Kashmiris have their right for self-determination? Kashmiri people are also like us. You know, they want to live life with their dignity and respect. They want to go on their daily business without fear, you know, getting killed or being arrested. So these are things, as a human rights defender, you know, I always talk about these uh, Kashmiri people's issues. We had, uh, we moved the uh, motion in the, our local labor party ward and which was passed then the Labour Party adopted that motion uh, in their last year's uh, international, uh, their national conference. So we do all we can to, uh, you know, raise awareness about the appalling condition of Kashmiri people. We are observing this uh, Kashmir solidarity day throughout the world. And we know there are people in this world who believe in democracy and in human rights and the right of determination and they fully support uh, the Kashmiri suffering people of Kashmir. The similarities between what's happening in Palestine and what's happening in Kashmir is, uh, is for obvious reasons, uh, very, very similar because they both originate from the occupation of the subcontinent and the occupation of, the, of Palestine by the British. Uh, and they all have, you know, a colonial agenda. So I think in that sense th that there is a commonality and I think what we should be doing is working together because when we organize demonstrations on Palestine, a huge amount of Kashmir population in the city join us in that. Uh, I think the common thing that we should be demanding is that there should be no trade both with India and Israel and particularly the arms trade uh, unless both these countries abide by international law and by humanitarian laws and they both actually violate those habitually and they have been doing it for the last 70 years being there and so forth so this is something that needs to be discussed in terms of how the major access to you know basic humanitarian needs are going to be provided and also more moving more so on the diplomatic level international pressure uh, i'm also looking at the fact that uh, dominic raab has mentioned today with with the coup that's happening in Myanmar, that they condemn what's happened there um, but why is it not condemned in terms of what's happening in kashmir why is this said, um, Birmingham Stop the War for many years has been uh, very active in support of the Kashmiri struggle. People say they support the United Nations, but don't actually um, willing to support its resolutions. And obviously we have the example in, on Kashmir of the 1947 resolution